A few years ago, there was a very significant pastor's meeting in Boston, Massachusetts. It was not a meeting of Seventh-day Adventist pastors. These pastors were evangelical pastors, and they were coming from all over the United States, three, four hundred pastors. One of the pastors from Chicago was on an American Airlines flight. He was sitting on the aisle. And as he was sitting on the aisle, there was nobody in the middle seat, and there was a man sitting at the window seat, and the plane took off, and this man, pastor, going to the pastor's meeting, sitting on the aisle, looked across, and he saw the man at the window praying. And he thought to himself, great, I've got a Christian seatmate, but I don't want to intimidate him too much and tell him I'm a pastor. So I'm so thankful that I have somebody that's a Christian. So he looked over, the man prayed for a while, and he prayed and he prayed, and the pastor looked over and he said, you know, I I'm just wondering, you, you're a, you must be a Christian, I saw you praying, and I'm a Christian too. And the man looked up with a very scowly looking face and he said, what are you talking about? I'm not a Christian. Are you so arrogant you only think Christians pray? Well, the pastor did not quite know what to say, and sometimes, you know, you put your foot in your mouth, you kind of say the wrong thing. So the pastor looked at me and said, well, if you're not a Christian, who are you and what are you praying about? And the man said, I'm a Satanist. I'm a Satanist. And I've been praying. And I'll tell you what I'm praying about. You may not be aware of this, but there's a pastor's meeting in Boston. And the pastor said his heart began to beat, the hair on his head stood up, and the, the hair on his back of his neck stood up, and he said, there's a pastor's meeting in Boston. And I am meeting with a group of Satanists because we believe that Christianity is a relic of the Dark Ages. And when you look at the Crusades and all the brutal persecution, he said Christianity hasn't done anything good for the world, which is a total lie, of course. But he said, I am meeting with a group of Satanists, and we're going to pray that disunity will come into that pastor's meeting. We're going to pray that divorce will take place among those pastors. We're going to pray that their kids will be lost. And I'm meeting with three to 400 Satanists. If you are not praying for your pastor, the Satanists may be a praying against your pastor. If you're not praying for your city, the Satanists may be praying against it. I was going to Melbourne, Australia to hold an evangelistic meeting. I met with a group of Adventist pastors and I told them this story. At the end of my series on prayer, in which I urged Adventists to be praying and seeking God. At the end of that, the coordinator of my evangelistic meetings, an Adventist pastor, stood up and he said, I have to speak to all these pastors. He said, my wife was on a train the other day here in Melbourne, Australia. It was noon. She looked, saw somebody praying. And she said, oh, you must be a Christian. She said, the lady looked up and said, I'm not a Christian at all at 12 o'clock. Every day in Melbourne, the Satanists covenant to meet together to pray that Satan will have victory in this city. My brother, my sister, do you know Jesus Christ? Are you on your knees praying every single day? Maybe you've turned into this broadcast and you're looking for something deeper in your own spiritual life. Maybe you have had a superficial Christian experience. Maybe you've been apathetic. God is speaking to you. He's calling you to set aside a time to pray. He's calling you to set aside a place to pray. He's calling you to pour your heart out to God. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are spiritual. There is a battle, a battle between Christ and Satan, a battle between good and evil. We cannot win that battle without the divine power of the living God filling our lives. Will you commit your life right now to earnest intercession? Will you say, Jesus, I don't want the superficial. I don't want an external Christian experience. I want something deep. And each day I'll meet you at the time of prayer. Each day I'll meet you at the place of prayer. Will you bow your heads with me just now?